What's the word, y'all? I miss this time of the year. A complete one take post game reaction to something we just seen. And well, the Golden State Warrior season is over. Man, man, man. I cannot believe it. A lot of the experts and the people that were making predictions, me included, picked the Golden State Warriors to win this game. And we were all wrong. Like the beam, ladies and gentlemen, the Sacramento Kings put the smack down on this. They, they started this game with all the momentum and it never, ever, ever shifted. They, they, they kept their foot on the gas the entire time. But the Steph Curry, Klay Thompson, and Draymond Green era might be over. It might be. Klay Thompson, free agent, they offered him some money earlier. He didn't like the dollar amount. And he just went into this winner go home scenario and shot a whopping 0 of 10. 0 of 10. It is in insane. Um, but before we talk about the terrible season that was this Golden State Warrior year, we have to give the credit. We have to give the love to the Sacramento Kings because they set the tempo. They set everything very early in this game. Keegan Murray said, hey, I'm going to guard Steph Curry in the first half at least. And then second half, they switched it up and let Keon Ellis get some burn. I'm going to guard Steph Curry. But I'm also going to hit four heavily contested three-point shots in the first quarter. And they were talking about on the broadcast, like, man, anytime Keegan Murray's wide open, he's missing. But when you contest it, he's knocking it out. He had eight threes in this one, 32 points, which is phenomenal. The Golden State Warriors is always a team that is, uh, they're notorious for losing a turnover battle. The entire time, all of their, their championship runs, they turn the ball over a lot. And that's part of having a free-flowing offense. It's part of having or trying to make decisions two steps ahead. But in this one, it hurt them well more than, than it helped to have that free-flowing and this and that. They turned the ball over 16 times. There's not promise you it felt like more than 16. In the fourth quarter, they had five possessions. Five possessions. Three of them ended in turnovers. And that was the moment I was like, it's over. I had already been feeling like it was over. I was really taking my notes and like, okay, how can we talk about how great the Kings were? Because I had already made my mind up that it was over. But in that fourth quarter, when they turned the ball over time and time again, there were multiple times in this game where they couldn't even get the ball in. What? This is a winner go home scenario with a championship level rock. Wiggins, Draymond, Klay Thompson, Steph Curry, Kevin Looney, who hasn't played for a very long time, got some burn in this one because they were going against the Kings and he he uh, played to bonus so very well last year in the playoffs. This is a championship quality team. You trying to tell me, or championship DNA team, you trying to tell me we can't get the ball in? Come on now. The real MVP, even though, again, uh, uh, Keegan Murray hit 32 points leading all scores, the real MVP for me was Keon Ellis. We talked about him in our pregame saying that, um, or our, our prediction video, saying that he was going to be super important. That the last time the Sacramento Kings and the, uh, and the Golden State Warriors played against each other in January, Keon Ellis wasn't a part of the rotation, and he was going to be tasked to guard Steph Curry. When in the second half, Mike Brown switched it up on him. You know, and I, they, they were playing chess, not checkers. Because you know that Steve Kerr was going to change something, right? And what he did is he changed his, his line of going into the third quarter. And they went on a nice little run in that third that was like, okay, are they going to make something happen? But Mike Brown was like, I know they're going to change something, so we going to change something too. So you might be prepared to play against Keegan Murray, Steph Curry, but now we're throwing Keon Ellis at you. And Keon was not afraid of the moment. This young sophomore year player, three for four from three. And one of the things, if you remember, if you've watched the Ken Beachum podcast, I don't know if you really do. Um, one of the things I was talking about with the Sacramento Kings that if they did make the playoffs, the, the opposing teams are going to leave Keon Ellis open because even though he has been a knockdown shooter this year, about 40%, you have to pick your poison. That's just basketball. And having the young, inexperienced guy take the shots, you like that over letting Sabonis uh, do the thing. You like that more than even Keegan Murray. You like that more than De'Aaron Fox. And in this one, Keon Ellis was all over the place. He ended with 15 points, uh, five assists, four rebounds, three steals, three blocks, and a plus 27 on the night. Mike Brown said... This is a winner go home scenario. I'm not I'm not thinking about really playing our bench. We're going to ride our starters and we're going to let them win this game and that's exactly what they did. Uh, Harrison Barnes took a late shot clock turnaround fade and mid-range jump and it was cash. I was like <laughs> you can do no wrong today. You can do no wrong. So like the beam and they got one more to get in and this against the Pelicans again. We don't know what's going on with Zion and his calf or whatever uh, held him out for that last 2 minutes. But Based on what we just saw here, anything is really possible. And I think that if they win that game, they'd be the first 10th seed to actually make it. So it's some potentially interesting stuff. Um, but the Warriors. Um, the Warriors, man. The Warriors, the Warriors, the Warriors. Oh, one more thing I want to give credit to Mike Brown. I'm all over the place. You know how these videos go. Um, they were completely, completely okay. I'm talking about the Kings. Completely, completely okay with playing 4-on-3 or 3-on-2. Kenny, what do you mean? What they were doing when, when um, Draymond Green or Wiggins set that high pick and roll for Steph Curry, something that killed them in Game 7. If you remember Game 7 of the playoffs last year when Steph Curry dropped his 50, this high pick and roll dominated the game. 
And what the Sacramento Kings decided in this one game elimination, they were going to send two basically heads of screens and allow basically Steph Curry. This is just imagine Steph Curry getting two defenders on the ball screen. The roller gets the ball. And you think about it, now it's a four-on-three scenario. Or in some cases, it's a three-on-two scenario. And this is where Draymond Green, uh, uh, what did uh, LeBron James said this on Mind the, Mind the Game, right? That's the name of their podcast with JJ. That Draymond Green's superpower is that when he's playing four-on-three and when he's playing three-on-two. And in this one, there were not a lot of opportunities where they made the Sacramento Kings pay. It's just not. Whether that been because the talent on the court you just didn't trust to make the right decision. Or sometimes it was Wiggins as the role man. And Wiggins' playmaking uh, uh, ability is a hundred times worse than what Draymond Green can do. So Wiggins gets put in that scenario was 4-3. and three. He's, uh, uh, what do I do? Bad shot attempt turnover. And that's just good coaching. I, I think that's just really good coaching. And that's just people... Them playing players that maybe aren't built for that type of scenario. You know what? The going into this, the one of the reasons why a lot of people picked the Golden State Warriors is they had all the momentum, right? For the last month, the Golden State Warriors were looking pretty damn good, and for the last month for the Sacramento Kings, you consider no Kevin Hurd, you consider no Malik Monk. This was it felt like a no brainer to a lot of people, and that's why we let a play in because nothing is a no brainer. Um, this is disappointing if you're a Warriors fan, I would say, to miss the playoffs completely when you have Steph Curry on your roster. It's unacceptable. When you have a top 10 guy, missing the playoffs is unacceptable. No matter the circumstances. Now, there are a lot of people that get blamed in this, all right? Draymond Green got suspended in this season, right? Draymond Green is not suspended, and we know how good Draymond Green is on the court with Steph Curry. It's one of the best two-man games of the last decade or so. He plays two more games other than his suspension. They might not be the 10th seed in the play. And hell, that game might have been in um, in San Francisco. Or that they might have hosted a playing game. But hell, that could have been a 6th seed. Who knows? There are a lot of different determinant factors to get to this point. Draymond's suspension has to be towards the top of the list. But the other thing, and this is something I've talked about a lot with the Golden State Warriors, especially since they had their title run in, what was that, 2022. It is... So very hard to play the two timelines thing. It's so very hard to play the two timeline thing. And listen, there are a lot of players, on the, the younger players on the Golden State Warriors. Trace Jackson Davis only played 10 minutes in this one. It just wasn't a good matchup versus the bonus. But Trace Jackson Davis is a diamond in the rough. He's the last pick of the, of the, the draft a couple years, or last year. Um, uh, Brandon Pazimski is going to be an all-rookie player. Hell, um, um, Jonathan Kaminga is going to finish in the top five of most players. So like, they have good young talent. But what I will always say is when you have a top 10 player, specifically a top 10 player that has helped you win championship after championship after championship, you have to do everything in your power to make your roster good enough to compete every single year. And keeping these younger guys, instead of potentially selling some of them to get real talent that can help you right now, is one of the reasons why we end up in the play-in and we lose. This is a lost Steph Curry year. And that sucks. I'm not going to act like Steph Curry was this supernova version of himself. Today, he had 22 points and six turnovers. He had most, more turnovers than assists. He had three more turnovers than assists. That is unacceptable from an all-time great. But still, in the grand scheme of this entire season, or the last two years, I've been saying it. And they started to do it a little bit. And that was part of them trading Jordan Poole. Now, obviously, part of trading Jordan Poole is like, hell, him and Draymond Green's relationship is probably too far to be put together. Um, and his contract was huge. And you go get Chris Paul, who was basically a non-factor in this one. He had one shot. I was like, oh, there's Chris Paul. But he was a non-factor in this one and for the majority of the season, if I'm being real with you. Um, but, hell, that trade doesn't look bad because the, the contract that is Jordan Poole, you're off that and you're going to be eventually off the, the Chris Paul contract. But you just want I, – I just wanted them to, to maximize what they have in Steph Curry because you look at the other players – in the association, I'm gonna, I'm just, just, just so I don't forget anybody. Top NBA players right now, you know what I'm saying? Let's, let's do some googling on the fly. Top NBA players right now. The Ringer has their own thing, and let, let's just see how many of the top ten players in basketball could you say the the GM of that team or the person running the team is maximizing the idea of having a top ten player? Uh, Nikola Jokic and company, they maximized all of that. They traded everything they could potentially get, and then they got the championship. And a lot of people would agree that they're probably the favorite to win the championship or to win the Western Conference again. Luka Doncic, they traded every single pick until 2030 to build the roster they have right now. And a lot of us are looking at them versus the Clippers saying, hell, they're one of the hottest teams in basketball. The Clippers better look out. Giannis Antetokounmpo, they traded a guy in Drew Holiday who said one month before that he wanted to, 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 he wanted to retire a buck. They said, hell no, get out of here. Come in, Dane. 
Was it the right decision? We don't know just yet, but they trying to maximize. Shea Gillis Alexander is still too early to say. We'll see what, see what they do. Joel and B, they tried to maximize. They traded Ben Simmons and some picks to go get James Harden. James Harden, no word. We trade him for some stuff, and, and now they have another spot to potentially go get another max ish player. They're trying to maximize. Kawhi Leonard, they traded everything to get Kawhi Leonard, including number four on his list with Shea Gillis Alexander. Maximize Kawhi. Jason Tatum, they traded the heart and soul and Marcus Smart and brought in Porzingis. All of these other teams until we get to number eight. Steph Curry, can we say they try to maximize the talent on the roster? They have not done that. And it's frustrating. And I'm not even a fan of the team. Hell, I don't care if the Warriors miss the playoffs for the next 100 years. It doesn't bother me. But I like to see Steph Curry in a playoff series. And we're not getting that this year. It's unfortunate for the entirety of the basketball. Now, I'm not saying that I, I wanted them to win this game. Because, again, it don't matter. But I love watching Steph Curry. And I got to wait until the Olympics. I keep forgetting the Olympics exist. But I got to wait till the Olympics and then again to October to watch Steph Curry play basketball. And that's unfair because y'all don't want to do the thing. And Bob Myers left at the right time. My friend Bob, he left. He said, hey, I don't want to be the one making the decisions. And, and based on the money that was offered to Klay Thompson and based on him declining that money and based on the fact that even though he, he finished the season very strong in the last two months, he just shot 0 for 10 in a winner go home game. It's hard for me to think that he's going to come to the agreement to take the less money that the Warriors might be offering him. And this might be the end of that trio that, that built the dynasty. It's hard to think about, man. It is hard to think about. Again, I want to give all of my love to the Sacramento Kings, man. Y'all know I've been sure y'all nothing but love for two years straight, my boy. Even the last the year, y'all didn't make it. I said y'all might make it. Y'all didn't make it. So, um, again, I'm not rooting for anybody, but it was a, a very fun game to watch, all things considered. Let me know what you think. Go to say Warriors Dynasty over the big three gone. Oh, I, I, I don't know.